Hey guys, Taufik here. Now, a few days back, one of my subscribers called Madhu, she reached out to me asking me if I could help her in solving an SQL problem which she faced in hacker rank. Now, I looked at the problem and I felt that the SQL problem itself was very interesting and I also felt that if you're applying for a senior role and you have an SQL interview, then this is the kind of SQL problem that you can expect. Hence, in this video, I will be solving this particular SQL problem. So the SQL problem that I'm talking about is uh, 15 days of learning SQL in hacker rank. Now it is stated as difficulty level hard and I accept that this is a slightly tricky problem to solve. So in this video, I will be solving this particular problem, but I will not be solving it in hacker rank, but I will be uh, basically solving it in my local PostgreSQL database. So I'm going to copy the same tables, uh, basically create the same tables, uh, use the same data sets, and then I'm going to try to solve it. And whatever solution that I come up with, the same solution should also work for my SQL database. Now, as I always say, before you can start writing an SQL query, it's very important to first understand the problem statement, understand the input data, and also look at the expected output. Uh, once you are thorough with that, then only come up with a plan to solve this particular problem. So let's try to do all of that first, and then let's try to solve the problem, okay? Okay, so as you can see, I am in the hacker rank website. I'm going to share the link to this particular problem in the video description. So definitely check that out. Now, this particular problem is named as 15 days of learning SQL, as you can see here, and its difficulty level is hard. Okay, now let's first try to understand the problem statement. So the problem statement states, Julia conducted a 15 days of learning SQL contest. The start date of the contest was 1st March 2016, and the end date was 15th March 2016. Okay, so we need to write a query to print the total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day. Okay, starting on the first day of the contest. Now, this is an important statement that we need to consider. Okay, uh, along with this, we also need to find the hacker ID and the name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. Okay, and let's say if there are more than one such hacker who has a maximum number of submissions, then we need to print the hacker ID with the lowest hacker ID, okay? Uh, the query should print this information for each day of the contest sorted by the date. Now, I'm going to explain this uh, in detail a little further, but let's proceed. So we have been given two input tables. So there is a hackers table and its structure is mentioned here. And then there is a submissions table. Uh, its structure is mentioned here, okay? And then they have also given us some sample input. As you can see here, there is a hackers table. So there is a hacker ID and there is a hacker name. And then in the submissions table, we have submission date, we have submission ID, hacker ID and the score. And they have also mentioned the sample output as you can see here. So basically from the input data that we have something like this, we need to transform that data so that we will get something like this. Okay. And they have given us the explanation on how did they arrive at this particular output. Okay. So I'm going to leave the link to this particular problem in the description below. So you can go ahead and read this explanation. I'm not going to be reading it here because it's pretty lengthy, uh, but I will be explaining every step in detail when I'm solving this problem. Okay. So we have read the problem statement. Now let's try to understand what exactly we need to do. Okay. So in order to make it easy for you to understand and easy for me to explain, I have already copied this entire data, this whatever data that they have given, right? Including this output. I have copied that into an Excel file and I have just made it a little neater for you to look and understand. Okay. So as you can see, this is my submissions table here, everything here. And this is the hackers table. And this is the final output that I need to come up with. Okay. So if I go back to this particular problem statement, there are actually two different things that we need to do. Okay. So the first part that we need to do is we need to print the total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day. Okay. And we need to consider one day at a time, starting from the very first day. Okay. So this is the first thing. So finding out the unique or basically total number of unique hackers for each day, this is our first task. Okay, so let's first try to split our uh, requirement into two different parts. In the first part, we are only going to write a query which is going to return this. That is the total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day. And we need to consider one day at a time starting from the very first day. This is a very important thing that we need to note. Okay, once we have written a query for that, once we have got our result for that, then we will move into solving this part of the query. That is, we need to find the hacker ID and the name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. 
okay so we will try to solve this separately in a separate query and we will try to solve the first part in a separate query and then finally we will try to merge both the queries together to return the final result okay so let's try to do that so first of all the first part of the query is we need to find the total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day okay so you can see that in our input data for now let's only consider the submissions table and you can see that i have data for six different days okay so for first march i have four different submissions and these submissions have come from different hackers you can see that the hacker id for all of these four submissions is actually different and then in day two that is my second march you can see i have I think three unique hackers because this 79722 has made two different submissions on day two. Okay. Whereas then there are two other hackers who made one submission each. Okay. Now, similarly, I can look at the data for day three and also data for day four and for each day. So each day I have marked it in different colors. So it becomes easier for you to see and understand. Okay. Now, if I go back here, we need to find the total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day. Okay. Now they are telling we need to find hackers who made submission each day, but that does not mean that we need to consider every single record or basically data for every single day at once and then try to see who is the hacker who made submissions each day. Because if I do that, then you can see that on this 6th March, there is only one hacker who made the submission that is 20703 and this 20703 is the only hacker who has made a submission in each day. And if I interpret the problem to be something like this, that I need to consider the hackers who made a submission each day and consider the entire table at once, then basically the output should always be, the number of unique hackers should always be just one, right? Because this is the only person who has made the submission in every day. So the total number of unique hackers who made the submission should also be just one for every single day, right? But that's not the output that we have here, right? The reason for that is, uh, we need to consider starting from first day of the contest, meaning that when we write the query, first we should only consider day one. Okay, so in day one, we need to see uh, how many hackers have made or how many unique hackers have made the submission. Okay, and since this is day one, I do not have any other day to consider. Basically, all the unique hackers will be my total number of unique hackers for that day. Okay, but when I go to my day two, this is where it kind of gets tricky. So when I go to day two, I need to consider only those hackers who have made submission both in day one and in day two. So that is why here I can say that I will get four distinct hackers. But when I come to day two, I need to see these hackers should already have made a submission in day one. Right. And if I see that I can see 20703 has made a submission on day one and then 79722 has made a submission on day one. So meaning that I will only get two unique hackers who has made a submission in both these days. OK. And I'm considering unique hackers, even though this 722 has made two submissions. Since I'm considering only unique hackers, I'll treat this as one. And then this 703 is one. So totally two unique hackers. Okay, so this is how I need to proceed. First, I need to start from day one, then I need to consider day one and day two, then I need to consider day one, day two, day three, then day one, day two, day three, day four, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's the tricky part that we need to consider when solving this problem. Okay, so what type of query can I write in order to process the record one day at a time? Right. So this is how we need to think because we need to write a query where we kind of treat the day one as kind of like our base query or kind of the initial input. And once we have that initial input from there, we need to kind of execute the query again, but this time considering day two and we need to only consider the hackers who were already present in day one. Right. And then once we have uh, processed day one and day two, then we go to day three. And when I go to day three, I only need to consider the hackers who already were present in both day one and day two. Right. So it's like I need to iterate through these records one day at a time. So whenever you have this kind of a requirement, one of the best ways of solving this kind of SQL problem is by using recursive SQL queries. OK, so I'm going to be solving this part of the problem by using recursive SQL queries. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go into my PostgreSQL database and I have already created these two tables here. So the, it's the same table, same data. So hackers table and the submissions table. Right now, I will be using uh, recursive SQL queries to solve this problem. And I already explained you why we would need to recursively execute the query uh, for each day so that we will get our required output.
right? But let's say you are not familiar with recursive SQL queries, then I highly recommend watching my tutorial video that I have made on recursive SQL queries. So try to watch that video first. So you kind of understand how to write recursive SQL queries and then come and uh, watch this video. I think you will find a link to that video uh, somewhere in the screen now. Okay. Now, whenever you are writing a recursive SQL query, we need two parts, right? First, we need a base query and then we need the recursive part of the query. Now, what exactly is the base query? So, in this particular case, I can always tell that my day one will always be, if I just take the distinct of all the hackers on day one, that basically should be it for my first day, right? So, whether it is March 1st here, I can see that I have four unique hackers. So, if I just do a count of distinct this, uh, I should be getting my final output that is for day one but the things will get tricky when I go into the next days right but anyways for now let's just write a simple base query uh, which should basically fetch me the data for day one so let's try to write that so because I need to write a recursive SQL queries so the format of recursive SQL queries is uh, I just I just need to say with recursive and I need to give a name so let's say I'm just going to give CTE as and here I just need to write the query so here I need to write my base query and then I need to do a union and then I need to write my recursive query, right? This is the syntax of recursive SQL query. And then finally, I need to query the data from my main CTE table, right? So this entire thing is the syntax that we need to follow to write recursive SQL query. So we need to come up with the base query and then we need to come up with the recursive part of the query. So first let's come up with the base query. Now, Okay, so I'm just going to write it here. So this is my base query. So what exactly is my base query? My base query is basically I need to fetch all the data for day one, right? And I need to do a distinct of the hackers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say select. I need only my submission date because I need the hackers for each day, right? So submission date and then I'll say hacker ID and from my submissions table, uh, what else? And the next thing is I need to fetch this data just for the first day, right? So I need to say submission date equal to the date value. That is the first day. Now I can hard code the date as 1st March 2016, but in but this will not be the right way to do it because in future, if someone changes the data and they change that uh, the first day is not 1st March, but maybe 28th April okay, or something like that or something else, right? In that case, uh, again, I will have to manually change this date. So let's try to write a more generic way. So instead of hard coding the date here, I'm going to take the date from the submissions table itself. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to say select minimum of submission date, okay, from the submissions table. Okay, so if I just execute this inner query here, you can see that because in my submissions table, I have these six dates, the day one will always be the minimum date, right? That is why I'm just taking select minimum of submission date from the submissions table, which is basically going to be my day one. And here, since I need the unique hacker IDs, I'm just going to put a distinct. And now if I execute this, uh, okay, so I'm getting an error. I think I have a typo here. So now let me execute it. Okay, so we have got our base query. So we have the data that we need for our day one, right? Uh, what next? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this or basically I'm just going to cut it and I will just uh, remove all this and I'll just put it here. Okay, so the first part of my recursive SQL query is done. The next thing that I need to do is I need to write this recursive part of this query. Now, the way how recursive SQL queries will work is uh, the base query will always execute first in the first iteration. And then when you go to the second iteration, the output of the first iteration will be used. Okay. And its output will can be referred by using this particular table name that is CTE. Okay. So what we need to do is now we have this result, which will be returned from our first iteration. And in the second iteration, we only need to process the records for day two. So now we need to write a query which is going to fetch the data only for day two and along with day two, it should only look for that data for those hackers who are already present in day one. Okay. How do we know which hackers were present in day one? We will come to know that by using this CTE table because in the first iteration, whatever was returned can be accessed by using this CTE table. And from this particular CTE table, we'll only access this hacker ID and only for those hacker IDs, which were present in day one, we'll only filter for those hacker ID 
uh, and then we will try to fetch the records in day two and with that we will try to fetch the distinct or unique hackers okay i hope i'm not confusing you guys too much but once i write the query i think you will better understand so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write the query here so i'm just going to say select and again maybe i'll just copy the same thing submission id and hacker id and this time again i'm going to fetch it from submissions uh, table and I'm going to join it with the CTE table. Now CTE here is basically the name of my uh, recursive uh, with clause that I have created. So in, in the first iteration this get executed, in the second iteration this will get executed. This CTE will basically be the output from the previous iteration, right? So here maybe I'm just going to give a name like yes and this I'll say yes dot and here also yes dot, okay? So how do I join this? So I need to join it first of all by using the hacker ID because only the hackers who are present in the previous days, only for those hackers I need to fetch the data from the current day, right? Or from the next day. So I just need to say CT dot hacker ID equal to yes dot hacker ID. Okay, so this is basically my join and then I need to also make sure that this part of the query will only execute for one day at a time. So I need to say, CTE dot submission date is equal to I need to get that day two in this case. So when it's executing for the second iteration, it should fetch day two. When it's executing for the third iteration, it should fetch day three and so on and so forth. So how do I come up with this particular date? Again, I'm just going to basically copy this whole thing here. That is the minimum of submission date from submission table, but we'll slightly do one small change here. So I am fetching the minimum submission date from the submission table, but I need to fetch that when considering one special condition. That is, uh, initially when I did the entire minimum of submission date from the submission table, it will fetch the data for this entire record and from this entire table record, it's going to fetch the minimum submission date. But when I go to the second iteration, I only need to start from day two. Right, so I need I should not be considering previous day because this was already pro, uh, processed in the previous iteration. So how can I do that? Is uh, I know that this particular day is always going to be less than whatever day I get here. So I can just tell submission date that is submission date is always a greater than CTE dot submission date. Okay. Now why am I doing this hacker ID equal to hacker ID is because in the first iteration, I get these four hacker IDs. In the second iteration, so when I say second iteration, it's basically this particular piece of the query. In this uh, particular piece of the query, the second iteration, I only want to fetch data for the hackers who are already present in the previous day, okay? And that is what is going to be achieved by using this join, okay? So I hope this is clear and I hope you understand this. Now, let's say if I execute this whole part, Okay, so I have done one mistake here. So I should not be doing CT dot submission date, but it should be yes dot submission date because I want to filter the data from this submissions table, right? From this entire submissions table, I need to filter to fetch only this many records, right? In fact, only the day two records, right? So I should be putting yes dot submission date equal to this filter condition, okay? And now let's try to execute this query. And you can now see I'm getting 12 records. And if you look carefully for each uh, day, so for day one, I have four records because there are four unique hackers. For day two, I'm getting just two records because there are only two unique hackers as I explained previously here. And for day three, again, I'm having just uh, two unique hackers. For day four, again, two unique hackers. And day five and day six, just one unique hacker, okay? So I have got the data that I needed. Now the last part is I don't need all of this hacker ID because as per my output, I need to get that number of unique hackers. So I need to do a count. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this star to submission date. And then I'm just going to say count of one. And this will be, let's say, total number of unique hackers. Okay. And since I'm using a count, I'll let me do a group by submission date. So I'm just going to say group by submission date. And let's say I'll do order by one. Okay. So that is order by the first column submission date. And now let me execute this. And you can see that I have got the first part of the output that I needed for this particular problem. So I have one record for each day, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and uh, 6th March. And then I have got the value. So you can see 422211 and it is 422211. So I have got the output for these two. Now I need to somehow write a query for these to get these two. Okay, so I hope you are clear on this. Now, this is the first part of the query. 
Okay, so now before I can go into the next stage of uh, solving this problem, uh, just quick update about my SQL course. So if you are not aware, last week I have started uh, giving my live and interactive SQL training sessions on Lighthall. So if you want to learn SQL uh, from me uh, through live and interactive classes, then definitely consider joining my live SQL course. All the details about my live SQL course, uh, all the contents, all the other details that you need is mentioned in my website. Uh, I will leave a link to my website and all the other details in the description below. So definitely check that out. Okay. Now let's get back into solving this problem. Now let's go ahead and solve the second part of the query that is to find the hacker ID and the name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. Okay. And if there are more than one hacker who made the same number of maximum submissions, then I need to consider the minimum hacker ID. Okay. So in other words, for each day, I need to go into my submissions table and I need to see who is the hacker who made the most number of submissions. So for day one, I can see that all the hackers, all the four hackers who made submission only made one submission each. But when I go to day two, you can see that I have a hacker 79722 who has made two submissions. So in this case, the hacker ID that I should print here should be this one that is uh, 79722. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this just to make it clear. And in this particular day one, because since all the four hackers have only made one submission, it's also mentioned if all the hackers made the same number of maxim uh, maximum submissions, then I need to consider the hacker with the lowest hacker ID. So the hacker with the lowest hacker ID is this one that is 2703. That is what I need to print. And in my day three, again, all the hackers made just one submission. So the minimum hacker ID is this one. And in my day four, again, all the hackers made just one submission. So the minimum hacker ID is again this one. And in my day five, I think there is 36396 who has made two submissions. So uh, the, the maximum number of submissions was made by this particular hacker. And in day six, since there is just one hacker, he will of course be the maximum, he, he will of course be the person who did the highest number of submissions. So I need to now write a query where for each date, I need to get these corresponding hackers. And then once I get this, it's very easy for me to join with the hackers table to get their names. Right. So let's try to write this query and this query I think is going to have multiple sub queries because we need to do a few different things. So I'm going to be writing that query, but I will try to use a new window here. Okay. So I'm just going to copy. Basically, we'll mainly need to use the submissions table. So I'm just going to execute that. Uh, you can see here. Now, the very first thing that I need to do is for each submission date, for each hacker, I need to see how many submissions they have made. So what I'm going to be doing is since I'll, I'm going to be having multiple sub queries, I'm just going to be using a with clause here. So the first with clause that I'm going to be creating is to basically find out uh, the total number of submissions. Okay, how many submissions they have made. So I'm just going to name it like let's say count submissions as and here I'm just going to write it. So what I just need to do is I just need to say select submission date comma hacker id uh, and then i need to count right because uh, for each submission for each hacker i need to count how many submissions they have made right i'm not interested in the submission id column and i'm not interested in the score column so i'm not considering that so i'll just say from submissions and i'll say group by these two columns so i'll group by submission date and hacker id wherever a hacker id has made multiple submissions for that particular date i should get the maybe count more than one or whatever number of submissions he has made right so let me just try to execute this now if i execute this okay it's all the data is in strange order so i'm just going to put an order by one just so that we can view the data more clearly now you can see that for day one uh, every hacker just made one submission but when i go to day two you can see that uh, this particular hacker has made two submissions right and same way for every day i have got the total number of submissions that each hacker has made that is the first step that i wanted now the next part that i need to find is now based on this data that i have already generated i need to now find for each day what is the count of the maximum submissions right so for day one the count of the maximum submission is one for day two it is two and for day three and day four again it is one but for day five it is two right let me try to get that the maximum submissions done in each day and then i will try to join that result with this particular result to come up with our final output so when i try to write the query maybe it will be more clear so i'm just going to say maximum uh, submission so this is the ct name that i'm going to give and here i'm just going to write so i'm just going to say select 
and I'm only interested in finding the maximum submissions for each day, right? So I'm just going to say submission date from my count submission. So I'm going to be using the data that I got from my previous with query here. Uh, so count submissions, uh, what I need to do is I need to do a group, group by submission date, right? And here I just need to do a uh, not count, but I need to find the maximum number of submissions. So, so for this count of one that I return in my count submissions with clause, I'm going to give an alias. Let's say this is my number of submissions, right? Uh, and then from this number of submissions, I want to fetch the maximum of that number of submissions. Okay. So I hope this is clear. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to say select star from max submissions okay now before i execute i just want to explain once again so i wrote the first subquery or the first with clause which basically grouped together the submission date and the hacker id to know which hack if there was any hacker who has made more than one submission for a particular day so i'm going to get that information here and the total number of submissions for each day for by each hacker is mentioned uh, will be found from this particular column okay then i wrote another query because for each day i want to know what was the maximum number of submissions done by a hacker for each day and that i have written it here so i have grouped this data based on each day and i have taken the maximum number of submissions for that day uh, so now let me just try to execute it and I'm getting an error. So let's try to fix this. So, okay, so I have two buys here. So let me remove that and let me now execute it. And now you can see that I'm having one record for each day. So what this means is for first March, the maximum number of submission done was one. For the second March, maximum number of submission was done was two, right? So what my next step is, I'm going to be using both these with clause tables. And then I'm going to be joining them using the submission date because both of these can be joined using the submission date. And then I'm going to fetch the hacker who has made this maximum submission. But let's say if there are multiple hackers who has made the same number of submissions, then I'll try to fetch the record with the minimum hacker ID. So let's go step by step. So first of all, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I have this and maybe I'm going to give an alias M and I'm going to join it with my count submissions table. I'll give alias C and I'm going to join them by let's say C dot uh, submission date equal to M dot submission date. So that is my join. And here I just need to fetch C dot submission date and then C dot hacker ID. And then let me also see what is the number of submissions. So C dot let's copy this and put it here number of submissions and let me just execute this okay so now i think if you see this basically did not really uh, work the way how we wanted it to do because we joined these two just using the submission date there is one additional uh, join condition that we need to add and that one is so let me just move this to the next line and i'll just add it here and that one is because uh, for each submission date I have got a total number of submissions and here I have got for each submission date I have got what was the maximum number of submissions so I need to join them because I am only interested in the maximum number of submissions so what I just need to do is I just need to say c dot number of submissions is equal to m dot maximum okay so for this also I'll let me give an alias so I'll just tell max submissions okay so I'm just going to say max submissions I'll just give it here and now let me try to execute. I think now I'm getting 14 records. And now if you look at the data carefully, you can see here for day one, uh, I have four unique hackers and each of them has made one submission only. But when I come to day two, I have only one record because this is the only hacker who made two submissions. So he's already popping up here and that is exactly what I want. And for day three, again, I have all the hackers because all these three hackers made the same uh, submission that is one for day four also same for day five. Uh, since there was one hacker who made two submissions, only his record is shown up here. And the same thing for day, day six as well. Now from this, what I need to do is I have basically done one part of this. That is, if I go here, uh, I need to find the hacker uh, who has done the maximum number of submission each day. So I have got that. So for each day, the hacker who did the maximum number of submission, I have got it. But along with that, they also told if there are more than one hacker who did the same number of maximum submission, then consider the hacker with the lowest hacker ID. So now what I need to do is from this output, I again need to group the data. So here I'm just going to say group by 
and I'm just going to group bind this hacker ID because for each day I only need to find one hacker. So if there are multiple hackers with the same number of submissions, then I need to find the hacker with the minimum hacker ID, right? So I'm just going to say minimum of hacker ID and this will be let's say my hacker ID and I don't need number of submissions to be printed. So I'm going to remove that and now let me execute this. So if I execute, so let me execute this again. Now you can see that for each day I have got the hacker ID who basically has done the maximum number of submissions. So for the first day it is uh, 2703. So if I see 2703, then 79722, uh, then again 703, 703, then 396 and 703. So looks like I have got the correct output. I hope this is clear and not too confusing. Now we also need to display the hacker name here, but I'll try to do that at the very end. So what I'm going to be doing now is I have the second part of the query written from here and I have the first part of the query that was written from our recursive C team. Now I'm going to merge all of them together into a single query because here I just got the two columns that I need and here I got the remaining two columns that I need, right? Now I need to merge all of them together so I can get the output which has all of these columns together specific to each date right so how do i merge both these queries together so i'm just going to open a new window here and let me copy this cte first so i'm just going to copy it and i'm just going to merge all of them together okay so just uh, try to understand how i merge all of them together so i have this cte here and since i also need to merge all of this query together uh, i will try to put this part of the query also inside another cte Okay, so I'm just going to put a comma here and I'll just move this to the right and I'm just going to give a name for this, let's say unique hackers as, okay, and let me open a parenthesis here and let me close a parenthesis here. I actually don't need to have an order by here, so I'm just going to remove the order by uh, because we will sort the data a little later. So this is fine. And finally, we will try to write a main query where I'm going to be using this. So we'll keep this on hold. So this was the first part of the query. Now the second part of the query, let me try to copy this. So I'll copy this and I'll try to paste it here. Okay, so again, I don't need to use the with, uh, with the keyword again, but I'll just need to move this here. Uh, so, okay, so this is my third with clause or basically my third temp table that I have created. Uh, so all this is fine. It can stay as it is. The only thing is this main query that I wrote, I will again move this inside another with clause. So I'll just move this to the right and here I'll put a comma and I'll give an alias for this. Uh, maybe this will be final hackers and I'm just going to open a parenthesis here and I'll close a parenthesis here. And finally, let me write the main query. Okay, select from and we'll see how do we do this. So what we need here is, of course, we need the unique hackers because this is basically going to return the first part of our query. So I'm just going to use this unique hackers and let's say I'm going to give an alias u and then I also need this final hackers right this is what returned our second part of the query where we got uh, who was the hacker who made the highest number of submissions each day right so that one i'll try to join it here and i'm going to call it like let's say f okay or uh, i don't know maybe fh okay the naming convention is not that good but i hope you'll still be able to understand okay so i'm just going to join it here and the column on which i need to join it is of course the only common column that I have is basically the submission date. So I'm just going to say fh dot submission date equal to uh dot submission date. Okay, so this is fine. And now let's say if I just want to print everything, whatever I have. So I have, uh, so I have submission date and unique hackers. So I'm just going to say uh dot submission date comma. Uh, the number of unique hackers, right? So I'm just going to say uh dot number of unique hackers. And then for my final hackers, the second part of the query, I don't need submission date because they will always be same. I just need this hacker ID, right? So this will be fh dot hacker ID. And I think that's fine. And now if I execute this, uh, you can see that I am getting the data that I need. So I have got, okay, but the data is not sorted per day. So I'm just going to do a sorting order by one. 
Okay, and now if I execute, you can see for each day I'm getting the total number of unique hackers and the hacker ID who has made the maximum number of submission. Now, additionally, I also need to print the hacker name. And for that, I can use the second table that we have. That is the hackers table. I'll give an alias for this, let's say hack. Okay, and I'm just going to say, or maybe I'll just say hck and I'll say hck dot hacker ID equal to f dot sorry fh dot hacker id and here i'm just going to print let's say this is hck dot name as hacker name okay so i think that's all now if i just execute this you can see that i have got the output now if i try to compare it with angela michael angela angela frank angela michael angela angela frank and angela and this number also matches so basically that's it this is how i have solved this query of course there can be many different ways to solve the same problem but i think to solve the first part of the query recursive sql query is the best way to solve this uh, i hope you like this problem now i just want to show one more thing this i have tried to solve it in PostgreSQL, but the same query will also work in MySQL because the syntax for recursive SQL in MySQL and in PostgreSQL is the same. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be opening MySQL database. I think I already have it open here. So let me just open it and let me just zoom in and let me just so I have already created the same tables and loaded the same data uh, and I'm just going to execute this query. So if I execute the query, you can see that I'm basically getting the same output. So the same query works both in MySQL and in PostgreSQL. Okay. Now there is one thing that I want to mention here. Uh, that is, I tried to basically submit the same solution uh, in hacker rank, but I was getting some error. So for example, this is the particular problem. So I'm going to go down here and I will choose MySQL, right? And you already saw that I have used, this is basically MySQL workbench as you can see here. So I'm connected to the MySQL database. And when I execute this particular query, it's working absolutely fine. But when I copy the same query and I put it in hacker rank, and let's say maybe I'll remove the order by and let's say I'll just do a run code. I realized that it's basically not working. I was getting some error. So I, I think it may be because the version of MySQL that is used in hacker rank may not be compatible with a recursive uh, CTE. Okay. So that may be the reason, but I still think the query solution that I have given here is actually the correct one. Just that I think hacker rank is not accepting a recursive CTE. Uh, and I'm not sure why. Okay. But let's just wait for this. Okay. And as you can see here, I'm getting wrong answer. And if you look at this error message, it's basically telling that there is an error message when using this recursive CT. Okay. So I am guessing that recursive CT is not supported in the particular version of MySQL that is installed within this hacker rank website. Okay. So if anyone else has faced the same problem, you let me know. But the query solution is actually correct because it works absolutely fine in MySQL workbench. Uh, just that in the hacker rank, I'm not sure uh, if CT is supported, if basically recursive CT is supported or not. Okay. Uh, I hope this video helps. I hope you understood how to solve this particular problem. And I hope you uh, understand how to solve this kind of problem where you need to iterate through a data based on a particular set of records, right? Uh, if you like this video, definitely give me a feedback in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more such videos where you'd like me to solve more uh, complex or intermediate problems, definitely email me whatever problems that you have. And if I like it, I'll try to make a video about that. Okay. So thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.